going on guys? Brandon Haverilla from Red Max Events. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our photo booth series or more specifically our iPad photo booth series. Um, and today we are going to talk about how to get your photo booth or your iPad to take the pictures and ultimately end up with these, which are your printouts of those pictures you took on that iPad. Now this is a very common question I get asked all the time on Facebook Messenger, Facebook groups, I see it asked in groups, I see it asked in specific software related groups, um, I see it, I get emails, I get texts, I get phone calls, just about everything, asking how do you print from your iPad to your printer? Now there's a few ways to go about this. Um, what I would recommend is going with a professional photography printer like the one you see here. So this is a DNP RX1. What the professional photography printer is going to have to offer for you is quicker prints. So this thing prints in about 11 seconds, I think. They're all about in that same, I don't know, maybe 10 to 12 to 14 seconds um, per print. Each print is a four by six. So your standard like four by six um, cardstock type photo that you would find, um, that's, what is, that's what this is going to print every 11 seconds. So when you change the settings and alter it so it cuts that in half, Here's your four by six, right? And the printer is basically just automatically cutting it in half into two two by sixes. So essentially every 11 seconds, you're getting two pictures that print out. This also comes into play when you're talking about the media or the box of media that you put in this thing. You get about, for this one in particular, you get about 700 prints, which when they say prints, they're talking about the four by sixes. So you cut that in half and you double it because you're getting two for every one print. That means you're getting 1,400 of these strips per roll, which just a little side note, I get a few parties out of every roll of media, um, which is great. It doesn't cost that much. A box is like $170, but whatever. That's besides the point. I don't want to dive too much into this specific printer because I know a lot of people use different printers out there. There's plenty of options. They're all great. Um, so I want to dive more into how do you actually get this wired up with this, what do you need? What options do you have? Um, because there are different options that you have when it comes to printing from your iPad to the printer itself. Now in today's video, I'm going to be demoing everything with the SnapPick app itself on the iPad and the SnapPick print server. There's many software options out there. Another one, for example, Curator, they also have their own print server that you could download. In order to print from your iPad directly to your professional photography printer, there are none, at least I don't think there are any professional photographer printers out there yet that have AirPrint built into them. Now AirPrint, just so you guys know, is Apple's protocol to wirelessly print from any of their devices to a printer. So something like your HP inkjet that you use in your house for everyday printing probably has AirPrint built in, which means you can wirelessly print from your phone, your tablet, your iPad, um, and print straight to the printer and print something out. However, these professional photography printers were not really initially designed to print from an iPad to them. So they don't have AirPrint built in, which means they have to be hardwired via a USB cable or a printer cable to the printer itself. So with that said, you're going to need some kind of other computer. Now for this video, I'm gonna be just using one of my MacBooks. It's a little bit easier. Um, it'll be a easier for me to show you the screen because it's a little larger. Um, but normally when I run my photo booth, I run this thing right here, which is called a Pippo or Pipo. You'll probably correct me either way I say it. Um, but it's a P-I-P-O. This is the X9S. You can buy it on Amazon. It's about 160 bucks. Um, it's kind of like a Chinese brand little tablet computer. It sits on a slant. It's kind of like a wedge shape. Um, and what I normally do is sit this right on top of the printer. And what I do is I, I created a design in Photoshop that says, please wait for your prints with a little arrow pointing down. And I just sit it on top of the printer um, and I put that off on the prop table or on one of these cocktail tables off to the side so that if guests go to get their prints, they could see, oh, please wait for your prints. This is where they come out because the iPad photo booth concept and seeing a printer and stuff is not always like the, the most common thing that people will see at parties um, yet. So when they see this, they don't really know what to do with it. So by putting that little simple graphic there, they kind of know where their prints will come out. Now this computer is just a Windows based tablet. So it's like the bare minimum specs that you need. You just download the print server, run the print server on it. It's got all the ports you need in the back. It's got the USB, it's got ethernet so you can plug in a router. Um, it can connect to Wi-Fi. So you've got all the options you need right in this computer for a great price. Now you're gonna need some kind of network for these two devices to talk. Your computer and your iPad need to be able to talk to each other and communicate so that the iPad could send the photos to this. And if there are any issues, this can send 
that issue or that you know problem back to this so that this can tell you, hey, that didn't work, try again kind of thing. So in order to do that, there's two ways of doing it really. Um, the first way is going to be using a hotspot. So this is a Verizon Jetpack hotspot. You can buy it, you can add it on to your phone plan and pay monthly for it. You pay just like you would for another cell phone or another device. So you're basically paying to have service on this device. So you would basically just turn this on at the event, you would connect both devices to it, and now the two devices can talk to each other. And because this has internet, because it's your hotspot, the texts and emails that you try and send out on the iPad will send to the, the appropriate person or the appropriate recipient. The other alternative is to run a Wi-Fi router. So this right here is just a typical Linksys home Wi-Fi router that you would buy in a Best Buy. It doesn't have to be anything special because the two devices are going to be most likely pretty close to each other. So and there's really not gonna be any other devices on the same network. So you don't really need anything more than just a basic router. I have a few of them here. I have some Netgears, the Linksys, they all work great. Basically, what you would do is either A, just plug this in and connect both devices to it under the Wi-Fi settings, or you can run an ethernet cable, which is what I normally do. It's a little faster. Um, basically run an ethernet cable from the back of the Wi-Fi router. There's gonna be a few ports. Usually they have like four ports, one through four and then there's one that says internet. You don't want the internet one. That's if you have service coming into this, which you don't. You're just creating a network so the two devices can talk. So you're gonna go into one of those numbered ports, one through four, and then the other end of that ethernet cable, you're gonna plug into your computer. So for example, I'll plug it into the Mac, but you can plug it into this. Now the reason I recommend doing that, if you're doing a router, you're not gonna have internet anyways. So the text and emails aren't gonna send out, they're just gonna queue up. Um, so if you're just doing a printing event, that's great, you don't have to worry about it. If you are doing text and emails, they're gonna basically queue up and then once they connect to internet, they'll send out. So what I normally do so that we can ensure we have fast, reliable printing, we don't have a line coming up, we don't have printer issues, is I run this uh, hardwired Linksys router with our photo booth. I don't really run the hotspot too much. But I keep the hotspot in the bag and what I tell my attendants to do is during dinner when it slows down or if you get a chance at any point throughout the night, either connect to the hotspot or create a hotspot on your phone, simply close out of the app, connect to that hotspot and just let the text and email send out. You'll see the queue number sending out. Once they're all sent out, just go back or if someone comes to the booth to use it, just go back into the app, change it back to the Linksys and you'll be good to go. There's nothing more you have to do to get it to reconnect with that printer. So it's very simple to do. And this way you can ensure that you have fast printing. Now, like I mentioned, you have to run some kind of software on this computer itself. That software is called the print server and there's a few options out there. Like I said, if you're running SnapPick or if you're running Curator or I'm sure a few of the other apps have their own print server too. I think MobiBooth does, I think iPix does. They all kind of have their own print server, which is the software. It's usually free to download on you know Mac or Windows, download it onto your computer. And what that's gonna do is allow you to control the settings of the printer tell it to cut the strips. Um, you can shift the image up or down if you're getting a white stripe on the top of the photos or a white stripe on the bottom. Um, it's gonna allow you to shift that image or you know adjust the bleed of that image so that you don't get those lines. That print server is also going to basically talk to the iPad. So you're gonna select that print server in the iPad settings and then that's gonna know to send to that print server and the print server you're gonna tell it what printer you're using which most likely is gonna be the one printer hooked up and then it's going to print out to that printer. So right now I'm gonna show you some of the settings with this particular setup and this particular print server, but they're all pretty much identical. Um, they're just gonna be changed a little bit. And most of these uh, software companies have great support behind them. So if you guys are having an issue with their specific software, you can reach out to them. But if you have any questions, just generic iPad based printing questions, what I do, what my setups look like, whatever it is, leave it down in the comments below on this video. Find me on social media, find me in the Facebook groups. Uh, if you're not in the Facebook groups like Photo Booth Network, Photo Booth Community, join those. It's a great resource if you're stuck last minute or if you just need some advice or you're looking for a template or whatever it is, you can post it up in that group. There's some great people there that will help you out. So I'm gonna dive in and show you what this looks like. First, we'll take a look at the iPad. So I'm running SnapPick print server here. This is the start of the photo booth app where you can go to your gallery, see the pictures, etc. Basically, I'm gonna go back, exit out, and if you're running SnapPick, it's going to be the same thing. You're gonna to wanna to go to this start screen or what they're calling like the event details screen. Now in here, you'll see configure printer right here. You're gonna select configure printer. And as long as you're on the same network that the computer is and the printer's hooked up to, you're just going to choose Photo Booth Print Server. 
Now you could rename that on the computer and I'll show you how to do that on SnapPix print server in a second. Now again, this is SnapPix specific, but if I go to start booth, go to a gallery, go to an image and click print right now, it's gonna print out. So let's go over, let's make sure the computer's set up right and then we'll come back and print an image. So here's the MacBook. I apologize if it's a little hard to see, but this is what their print server looks like. It's very basic. If you click up here, change server name, this is where you could change the name like I was saying. So if we change this, it'll instantly be reflected on the iPad itself. You just hit OK and you're set. Now you're going to have two options here because with Snappic you can print two different uh, layouts at once. You could do the 2x6 strips like I showed you or you could do a 4x6 print and you could do them both simultaneously. So guests can choose which one they want and Snappic's print server will know which one they choose to print and it will adjust the settings accordingly by the way you set it up. So standard configuration is going to be your 4x6 print and strip configuration is going to be your 2x6 or your classic photo booth style strip. So you're going to have to configure both of them if you're using both. If you're only using the strips, you only have to configure the strips. So if you go into the configure settings here, this is where you're going to choose your printer. So choose the printer from here. If you don't, you know, already have the drivers installed from their website and stuff, you're going to have to do that first. Make sure the printer's working with your generic computer if you just go to print an image before you try and troubleshoot anything else. But if it's not showing up here, that's most likely what it is. You can add it in your printer settings here if you go to your normal computer printer settings, but that's going to change based on what computer you're running. So after you choose your printer, now you've got some settings that you can adjust. So if we go in here and we go to DMP printer features, this is where you could choose the cut operation. So normal would be your four by six, two inch would be the two inch strips. You could also choose some other features that this printer has. Some printers might have different features. Um, you can go back up to page attributes and adjust the scaling and everything. And if you go to photo booth print server, this is going to be your margins. Now SnapPick calls them your margins. It's also known as your bleed. Basically, it's, it's more of that white line that you get. If you're getting a white line across the bottom of your image, the side of your image, the top of your image, you could adjust that here by just messing around with these margins. There's no real formula to it. It's not like they're centimeters or inches or anything like that. It's kind of just a, a play and see what looks best kind of thing. So if you're having an issue, it all kind of depends on how you load the paper in. If it's a little crooked, you might get a white line at the top, and you could adjust that digitally in this software here. That's pretty much it with the print server. All we have to do is hit save. You just leave this box open on your computer and that means the print server is running. We're going to go up to our Wi-Fi, make sure we're connected to that Linksys. There we are, Linksys. Now, since both devices are on the same network, we're going to jump back to the iPad, choose print, and we should be good to go. So as you saw, there are many different options you have. You could run off a hotspot. You could run off a Wi-Fi router and just create a network. You could run off the venue's Wi-Fi if they have strong enough Wi-Fi. Um, but what I recommend doing is just getting your own hotspot or getting your own Wi-Fi router to run for the printing. It's going to be a lot faster and a lot more reliable. If you're relying on a venue's Wi-Fi, it might work great when you first set it up and then everyone shows up with their cell phones. All the guests are here. They're all on the network. It might slow it down and you might realize that it's not working or your devices aren't printing at all or they're printing very slowly. So I recommend just running your own equipment, making sure you have a solid internet connection. Now, in addition, I didn't really go into it in too much detail, but SnapPick does offer a wired printing option. With the wired printing option, you could actually connect this hardwired to the computer and then print that way. It's one less wireless connection, so it's going to be a little faster. That's all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video. If you have any questions, comment down below. Please subscribe. Turn on that bell so you guys get notified when I post new videos. Thank you. Happy holidays. I'll see you next year.